I, I hear I hear Greg Taylor's off about three, but I'd take him. Coming up on the official Celtic FC podcast, we have a bonus episode with first team coach Harry Kuehl. Callum's driving the sessions every day in training. He's always the, the first one working hard. He shares more from inside the Celtic changing room and tells brilliant stories about his own playing career. This is the official Celtic FC podcast. Yes, everyone, what better way to kick off the new podcast for the new season than to be joined by this man. And, Harry, I've got a little list here just to run through. Wow. But he is a FA Cup winner, a Champions League winner, a Ballon d'Or nominee, a Premier League Young Player of the Season, one of the best left foots in the modern game, I think you could say, a goal scorer in the World Cup, and officially Australia's greatest ever player. Hey, that's enough. No, that's, Harry Kiel. that's enough. That's enough. Let's just finish <laughs> it missed, there. Have I missed anything out there? Is there anything? Uh, no, I mean, no. look, <laughs> I've been fortunate enough to have a, uh, a wonderful career yep. uh, and play, play for some great clubs and also play with some great players. So when people talk about, you know, great players playing the game, well, uh, a player is only as good as his teammates. So I've been fortunate enough to play with some very world-class players. And your teammates will probably say the same about yourself as well, because that is a very, very good list of honours. Um, Harry, we're going to talk a bit of football, a bit of stuff away from football. So let's start off away, away from football a little bit. And the burning question that I've got, and I feel like this is the perfect place to ask you about it. Where are we with the hair at the moment? Because you've got the haircut wow. just before <laughs> the end of the season. What are we doing with it now? Have we, have we grown it again? Are we keeping uh, it No, nah, I look... <laughs> I go, through, I go through stages. I, I do get lazy. Um, I'm not one for haircuts. Okay. Even though I've, I've, I've been out there and I have, I've had my fair share of uh, haircuts and dyes and tints and, and quiffs and double plaits and plaits and not plaits and skin heads and all that. Uh, last year, I, just, I obviously decided, and it, it all depends on the weather as well. Okay, because when it's weather. nice, yeah, when it's nice and hot, it's nice to have a nice clean cut. You're always out in the sun and all that, but... When it's in the winter time, you're always wearing a cat or a woolly hat. You know, you can kind of just cover it all up. And I just kind of get into that trend. Then I go, oh, well, I'm going to grow it. Um, but I, I still like to grow my hair because eventually, you know, it's going to stop growing. <laughs> um, but at the moment, I like it short. Well, my wife likes it short, so I have to keep it short. Well, that's <laughs> she got sick of, she got, for, Yeah, she's, she's, got, she's got sick of sight of the long hair. So she said, no, you cut it short now. So I cut it short now. <laughs> I, know, I know exactly what you mean because I, I went through the same same process myself last last year and cut it short for the summer it's nice just to have it have yeah it nice and, and it, it's look it's i'm not a, a very high maintenance person so i like to just kind of get up look yep yeah, done out the window have you ever thought of going full dyson Di- no I, I i've done it once okay. in my career and if you really want to look at it, we played portsmouth away and that's the only kind i'd like you see it and it is like very close to the skin <laughs> aerodynamic it, it, uh, well yeah it was it virtually Dyson, aer- so. <laughs> it was it, it it does um but no yeah I've, I've, I've gone close not completely yeah but yes yeah i mean this is now your second season at celtic so your second year in glasgow you've completed a full year in the city how have you how have you found the, the last year actually just kind of living and being part of glasgow and scotland it's been interesting um Throughout my career, I've, I've been able to travel and live in different countries. I mean, clearly coming from Australia, moving over to England very early on, and then having my three years in uh, Turkey, and then going back to Australia for a couple of years, and then coming back and then now moving to Glasgow. Look, it's been interesting, and especially the industry that I work in, uh, I've always been able to travel and kind of feel, you know, I can just go anywhere. And I have to say, it's been like that in Glasgow. Even though I, I hear, and the rivalry is massive, um, but I've never had a problem. Mm-hmm. You know, I've always gone out to restaurants, I've always been pleasant enough to people, and kind of people have just been kind of accustomed to just saying hello and, and moving on. And whether they were um, Celtic uh, fans or Rangers fans, I've never had a problem, or even as far as, as any other fans, you know. And I, I think. I look back and, and I just think sometimes people appreciate 
just people playing the sport for long enough and they like to see them up in their kind of city giving something back to their kind of football league. Yeah, because I've, I've bumped into a couple of times actually out in the... Have you? Street, have you? <laughs> yes, I have actually. <laughs> yes, you have. Yes, um, around Finningston. Yes. Uh, I, was gonna, I wasn't going to actually say the area, but yeah, you've, you've went oh, away Oh, I've moved it. out of there anyway. Oh, have you? Okay. Yes, yes. I'm still there. So, oh, okay, uh, then. People waiting for autographs. I'm not getting done. <laughs> um, but I spoke to you before about it actually and... That's one of the things you did say that when you go places, you always like to the first couple of weeks just try and get out and about to go to restaurants to get into the city, but also for people in that area to get to see you and about because you're obviously a famous face. So, it, is that something that's quite important to you when you move somewhere new? Well, I think it's important for yourself because footballs, are, even though like it's a it's a world sport, it's a very close kind of encounter like you you've got tight spaces and there's not a lot of room for you to be able to do certain things so i think the simple things that uh, you should be able to do is to go out there and enjoy the atmosphere or the the culture or the or even the the, the general area of where you're staying and get to know it mm. and i always think if you did that the first two weeks may be difficult uh, especially when people just want to come up for photos and all that kind of especially when you were playing but then after a while, if you keep going back there and all that, they just end up just going, oh, there he is again. Oh, well, don't need that again. So that, then you go past it. But I think if you keep yourself kind of reclusive and, and not go out there and making big scenes when you're going out to a certain restaurant, I, I think that's a little bit too much. And I just think people also appreciate you enjoying their area, their culture. And they, you know, they, they like that. Well, he's, he's, he's getting involved. And I like that. Talk us through then a nice typical day off for Harry Kiel. There's no football on the telly. You've not got any work to do at all. You're in Glasgow. What type of things have you enjoyed doing? What type of things would you like to go and do? Well, there's only, there's only a couple of things I like to do. I'm not a very complicated man. I'm, <laughs> you know, it would be golf. Okay. And, and You're you, in a good place. And, well, I'm in the greatest place, I have to say, for golf. And I'm very picky with my golf. I, I, I love it, um, but you do have some of the, the greatest courses I've ever seen, and you do have my favourite course. It was Wentworth down in London, my, my favourite course, and I've played everywhere around the world, but I have to say Loch Lomond is just tip that now, and Loch Lomond, is, it's the greatest course I've ever played. It's stunning, it's beautiful, but on a day off, I look, if I can get up at a nice, I, I, I wouldn't get up later, I'd get up about eight o'clock, I'd probably drive to the golf course, have a nice big Scottish breakfast, you know, with haggis. <laughs> one, yeah. Haggis, yeah, haggis. Uh, I love it. I love it. The square toast, I don't know why they were. No, is it the square toast, is it? No, the square sausage. Square sausage, yeah, yeah. Square sausage, love that. Um, have that, go hit some balls on the range and just have like four or five hours of just freedom. Yeah. I like, that's the only time I kind of switch off from football is I think because they've got so many other things to think about mm. playing golf <laughs> that I kind of switch off. Um, that then probably just going for a nice meal and then just going back about six, seven o'clock, relaxed, Chill. chilled, yeah. maybe watch a film and then go to bed. What's your golf like? My so, golf's good. Yeah? yeah? Yeah, my golf's good. Don't worry about me. You can take me, <laughs> you can take me anywhere. Yeah. I, can, I can play to the crowd. If you, because I know there's quite a lot of guys in the team that are keen golfers, would you fancy? I, I hear, I hear Greg Taylor's off about I three, hear, but yeah. I'd take him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I think we need to set that up. That seems uh, like a yeah, perfect no problem. I, I, I just think, I just think that the mentality that mm. I have You've would, been over, there yeah, I'd, I'd, yeah, I've no. been there. I've been in competitions. I've, I've won them. I know how to take him down. So yeah, <laughs> I'd, I'd be full on there. He'd have to be at his A game. Yeah, okay, right, we'll set that up then. I'm looking forward to that. And get it in Loch Lomond. It's your own home uh, yeah, territory. Yeah, for home it. course. Exactly. Perfect, perfect. perfect. Um, you're obviously in Glasgow. Have, have your family had a chance to come up much and explore much of the city as well? Have they had any opportunities? It, it's difficult because I've got four kids. Yeah. Um, you know, my, my, my oldest son, he comes up to watch the games uh, a bit because he's a, he's a big football fan. Okay. Um, and my daughter, she's working, uh, one of them, she's down in London in university. So she comes up for maybe Champions League games. She, so she picks the, the real good games. <laughs> um, but just at the moment with my two young ones going to school and my wife works on the weekend, it, it's difficult for her to come up. But when they do get an opportunity, they do come up. And yeah. like I said, you know, they do come to the games. We do go out for restaurants and all that. And I have to say the restaurants up here are fantastic. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, what's uh, what would be your your ideal? I feel like I'm just asking your favourite things now, but what would be your, what's your ideal sort of restaurant you've been to in Glasgow? You you'd go back to? 
This is a chance. This is your chance to get a plug in for free meals for the rest of your time here. Well, look, I mean, I, I have quite a few. Right, I have quite a few, but I have to say my favourite yeah. is Ho Wong's. Okay. Yeah, yeah I have to. I, I'm, I'm a big. I'm like I love Chinese food anyway, but that for me is like every time I've gone there, I really don't want to leave. Okay. It is the food is that nice. So, <laughs> you're listening. Yep. Get this man free food. What's your, what's your go to when you're in there? Have you got a. You no, got no, just it's, it's that good, it's everything. Okay. If it's that okay. good, it's everything. Okay. I'll need to. I, you know, I've been before, but I've not been for a while, so. Yeah, I'll it's, get, it's, it's one of them that I get excited. Yeah, we'll maybe bump into each other when they're there, see who can get the bill when we're there. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's talk a little bit about football because we're here, we might as well, and it's been a changing summer. Um, Obviously, you came in here last summer. Ange Postecoglou was manager. He's left. Brendan Rodgers has come in. I suppose, though, from your point of view as a coach, it must be quite a privileged position in a sense that you've had Ange to work under, who's such a top quality manager, and now Brendan coming in as well. Like from your position, that must be fantastic to learn out off of the both of them. Yeah, because you would probably say that you would work with a manager at least three to four years before yeah. there's there's kind of a change so yes I've been able to work with two great managers in a space of virtually two years and I'd have to say two managers that are regarded highly in the sport but have different complete ideas so it's 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 great I I enjoy the uh the challenge uh, I enjoyed working with Ange I thought his his ideas of football were were great the um, he he knew exactly what he wanted, his, and the way he presented it was clear cut. There was no, when people talk about it, it's, it's black and white, it, 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 was, it was just like straight black. There you go. It's, that's how plain and simple it was. Like I came in and I thought, well, it's going to take me a while to understand the movement patterns and the ideas. I think after I was here for a week, I knew exactly what was exactly happening. So that's how clear he was. And then now being able to work with the, the manager now, it's kind of different. And, and in, a, in, a, in a way, I kind of see myself more like a, 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 a Brendan Rodgers type of manager where he looks at the game in a different way. He likes to adapt certain things. He likes to make little tactical changes, which, like I said, I, I quite like. So it's enjoyable seeing this side of it. Um, look, it's early, so we're still picking up his ideas. We're still trying to see his little movement patterns. But again, they're, they're quite clear. Do you not think that's one of the most fascinating things about football that of course, both Ange and Brendan, the probably the overall philosophy in a sense is quite similar in terms of the way that they want to play football in the front foot. But it's so amazing, the game, that everyone can have their own little nuances and their own ways that they think can make that little bit of a difference, which I suppose from yourself as a coach, you'll have your own ideas as well. But also, you're soaking all this up and you're getting all these little nuggets of information and different ways of playing. It's, it's just really interesting, isn't it, the way that football can do that? Yeah, I, I think it's important for especially young coaches and like myself, um, knowing to pick up the, the little things mm. because I think as a, as a coach or a, a, a young coach aspiring to be, to challenge, because I, I love to be challenging these guys, you know, it's, it's important to have your own ideas. You know, and it's important to have your your own way of playing, because if you try to copy someone, players will see through that, and you won't believe it. If you want to go out there and and steal Brendan Rodgers' own ideas and try to make them yours, it ain't going to happen because there's his he's created it in his mind. So you have to kind of have your own ideas of how you want to play, but you pick up little messages. You know, little key informations just on what he would say to this player at a certain time or what would you say here or how would you deal with this or in a certain moment in a game. I mean, for example, I would watch last year and there was only one or two times when, uh, like, the opposition went down to 10 men. Now, as me, I'd be like, bang, let's go. Let's go and attack here and do this. Whereas the manager back then was just calm, selective, and he would wait for... And I remember, I remember asking him the question, I said... You know, I was sitting there and I kept on looking at my watch and I'm when are you actually going to put another striker on? Because, like, we could actually do this and would... And he goes, look, I, I, I was thinking about it, but you've got to give the players the, the information that just because something happens, we don't change it straight away. And he kept it the same and he kept it the same. And then I remember we just went, bang, goal, 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 goal. And I went, oh, 
Just imagine if, like that change. So again, that's the information I'm picking up, the little yeah. bits of quality of what they've experienced throughout their career that I'm just kind of picking up and just kind of adding to my little recipe. Yeah. How has it been for yourself and the other coaches working under Brendan, getting used to Brendan? Because I've been fortunate to see a couple of sessions on pre-season and Brendan obviously is a completely different coach to the previous manager. Very, very, looks very hands-on during the sessions, asks a lot of questions, Has seems to have this ability to stop sessions and have a picture of what's going on as well. So... How have things changed for, for you and your point of view as, as a coach? I love that yeah. because I, I'm, a, I'm, again, there's no, every manager's different uh, and every manager is allowed to manage their team exactly how they wish to do it. And the uh, Ange got the best out of his team for how, how he controlled it because uh, he used to watch from a distance and he would see everything anyway. Mm -hmm. Whereas, again, you know, working with someone like um, the manager now where he steps in, asks questions, again, I like that because I was always a player that asked questions because I'm not a, a... One of my pet hates in football is when a manager goes through something, explains it well, explains it crystal clear, goes off, first pass, someone makes a mistake, and you're sitting there going, what do what, if you don't understand, just ask the question. And I was always that one, just always wanted to be clear and ask exactly what he wants. And when you get a manager stepping in, well, he's stepping in for a reason. He's not just stepping in and go, okay, figure it out yourselves, because I, I don't think that can work. I, you, you need someone to come, hey, well, step down, control it, have a look, see what's about. Maybe we can do this, maybe we can do that. It's, look, ultimately, it's your decision, but I'm just giving you an idea. And you know, I've been fortunate enough to be able to work with some great managers that when they step in would just like zoom it out three or four times and you'd go, even as a player, you'd go, wow, okay, yeah, I see that now. Mm -hmm, yeah, if you were ever coaching me, know that I would get everything wrong first time because I'm a terrible footballer more well, than anything well, else. Well, no, no, again, <laughs> you just ask the questions. Right, ask you would the get questions. a headache. No, you wouldn't. No, constantly. that's fine. That's fine. I'd rather you ask. I'd, I'd rather, I'd rather players ask. Yeah. Than make uh, like a silly mistake and just go well. I mean, yeah. One, you're not concentrating. I mean, we, we're not asking you to concentrate for eight hours a day. We're asking you to concentrate for what? By the time you get in to the time you leave, maybe four hours, and an hour and a half of that is you know, or well, ninety minutes, maybe sixty to ninety minutes of that is training. So just concentrate. Yeah, and I, I get the sense as well with yourself um that one of the big defining factors of who you are where as a player who you are as a coach who you are as a person is hard work and i think actually i was reading before sitting down here it was an article and it was something about like i think when you were 12 and you were asked to write what you wanted to do in the next year five years ten years and i think by the age of 40 it was like i want to play for every age group in australia i want to play for the national team and then by 40 i want to be a, a coach as well and when you put a ranking in everything, everything was, this matters 10 out of 10, not 5 out of 10, not 6 out of 10, until 10 out of 10. How did you install that hard work ethic from such a young age and how important is that to you still today? Um, I suppose I, I, I grew up playing football against my brother. He was two years older than me, so kind of grew up with his mates. And every time I was challenging, I always you know, was playing against bigger and stronger people. So... One, I had to be quicker and faster, mm -hmm. right? So that, that kind of hurt. And then I never liked to lose. I still don't like to lose. Now, I don't even let my kids win now, <laughs> whether it's Monopoly or <laughs> Snap or a race. You know, I remember racing my, my youngest, um, and she's 11, and she's quick. Yeah, yeah and, and I thought I had her, and I, I did have her, but I ended up doing my hamstring. That's how quick I'd like... She went ready, and she goes, and I was like, and my son, my son talks that he can beat me. There's no chance. But she's 11, and like she's definitely taken my speed. Yeah. And I reckon maybe in two or three, she'll definitely be able to beat me. Kill dad more. Yeah. So that, that, that yeah, that, that ain't that ain't that's one I'm gonna lose. But I always I always believe everyone talks about you know what a great player you were this that now, but I was a good player. But my work ethic was probably like up there as one of the greatest because my ideas and my philosophy was when, when I played against someone, I would beat you. If I didn't beat you the first time, I'd beat you the second time. And when people turn around and say, oh, you've got to do it 10 times because maybe seven out of 10 may work. I was the one that went 13, 14. 
maybe 16, 7. I just kept on going. And by the end, the defender just went, oh, come on, I, I can't do it no more. So I, that was the thing. And I made the game simple. You know, I had, I had four, four kind of movement patterns. But it was the four movement patterns that he had no idea of what order they could come into. Mm-hmm. So then he had to get mixed up. So I, I, football is not a difficult game. It's played simple. If someone's in a better position, you then play it to them. Mm-hmm. You know, and then get yourself in a better position. If your position requires you to take a, a person on, which it was in my position, then take them on. You know, I mean, you're not there out there on the wing to just get the ball and pass it back. You're there to excite people. You're there to, to get past people and, you know, to, to get everyone excited because that's what you're there for. And that's what I did well. I did the simple things right. And I suppose that's where my work ethic came from. And, you know, I, I, I just loved working hard. You know, I, I, I love the feel of coming off on a, on a Friday exhausted. Like, literally, I needed to be exhausted on a Friday to feel brilliant on a Saturday because that means I've worked hard. Yeah. The reason I wanted to ask you about hard work is because relating it back to this squad and what they've achieved over the last couple of years has been absolutely outstanding. And as you said earlier, the question again now for this season is how do you go and top that? But what I get a sense of with this group is that their work ethic, their ability to put the hours into the training sessions and to strive to become better seems unparalleled from, from many of the teams you might see elsewhere. You're obviously in there in the training sessions, you're part of it, you're helping to coach these players. How do you see the group and the work that they put in and how much confidence does that give you then for this season? It gives us huge confidence, but I think when you talk about good work ethic and players working hard... We have, I'd have to say, three or four unbelievable players here that press. And when they play, and they usually play, when you see that, as a player playing, you're thinking, well, if they're doing that, Mm -hmm. I've got to do that. But the most important thing, especially in a football team, is your captain. And since I've been here, you're looking at Callum and every day in training and I'm not even talking about games because games are easy to get up to they're, they're, they're easy because it's what you do you're in front of a crowd it's beautiful so 60,000 people that's easy Callum's driving the sessions every day in training he's always the, the first one working hard he's always the first one sprinting he's never letting the ball down he's the first one talking he's the first one tackling he's the first one pushing everybody again as a player if your captain's doing that, there's no excuses. If your captain's walking around throwing his hands up and going, nah, I'm not doing this, socks down, you know, I'm like, it gives us an excuse then to go, well, if he's not doing it, I'm not doing it, you know. He's leading the, leading the way. And I've, I've played with captains that have done that as well and I've played with ones that haven't. And I've found that when you get a captain that works the hardest in training, that's easy then. Mm, yeah. It's easy to drive forward and easy to go to that next level because again you've got a new manager coming in adding his little bits of pieces to an already kind of beautiful flower you know but he wants to make something special but the the ground roots is you know the important people i.e your captain you know going out there driving the sessions and that's easy for us as coaches because we can just get there and go hang on a sec don't blame us look at him he's doing it he's doing the simple things right so it's simple Harry, just to finish off on, um, we've got some quick-fire questions, if that's okay with you. All about your playing career. Go ahead. If that's okay, I've got these I'll try. Here. And as we said at the start, it was a... There's no wrong or right novelist. answers here. No, exactly. So it's all... In fact, it's all right, because I'm right. <laughs> Always right, exactly. Um, first off, um, best player you played alongside? David Batty. Yeah? Okay. Why David Batty out of everybody? Because, again, he was a thinking player. He was the, the first kind of holding midfielder back in the day where now the holding midfielder is one of the key roles in football. And they go for £115 million yeah. after a year. Yeah. <laughs> he was a player that played the game very simple, yeah. done his job. Like, he was the perfect, uh, for me, front line of the back four where he just did his role. He was tough. He was strong, he was aggressive, and he just gave me the ball. Mm, yeah, Premier League winner as well, wasn't he? Yes. It was like, weren't you? I was going, my next question was going to be the most underrated player, but do you think he would maybe fall into nope. that category? No chance. No? No chance. Most underrated. I, can't, I don't know why I'm about to say this player, because he's a European winner as mm-hmm. well, 
was Steve Finnan. Yeah, okay. Uh, one of me, one of the greatest right backs I've ever seen. Yeah. He played the game. Again, I suppose it's because of maybe how he grew up and where he played in every like league to get to where he got to. Maybe he, he went unnoticed. Mm. But for me, he was one of the calmest players on the ball where you could give him a ball and there's the winger on him and plus a, uh, a striker closing him down and he would be simple. He'd keep it simple and move. He had a great cross. He was strong. He was powerful. Um, but yeah, he was one of the most comfortable people on the ball that I ever played with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good shout. Um, best player you played, it could be either against in terms of a, a fullback or shared a pitch with. I mean, Lots yeah, of great ones, yeah I mean, look, you're, you're talking about, I mean, I just national, national, national team. <laughs> I mean, you, you, Zidane was probably one of the best. But I have to say, you know, to, to have played the pitch when, you know, with Arsenal, you know, Terry Henry was a, was a fantastic player. Robert Perez was incredible. Um, so for me, look, even Paul Scholes, you'd have to say, you know, to, it was always tough going against him because he never really had an off day so I'd have to probably yeah. say Paul Scholes okay most hostile atmosphere you ever played in none none no I, 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 I never understood people go oh my god this is this is scary yeah yeah well, what's scary yeah I mean I'm sure you're playing on a green pitch right with 11 men okay the, the stadium's changed right okay there's there's people cheering or people shouting and all that I never, I never understood when people. Oh, this is a bit scary. This how would that get? Would that be the opposite I to you? Think, I, I just think. Look again. You're going out there. Doesn't matter if you're home or away. You should be playing the way that you train, which is perfect. And it doesn't matter what kind of atmosphere there is. I mean, the most I played in was what 128,000 when we qualified. Well, we were playing Iran back in '97. Right. And that was like, like you'd look at it and I remember going, like players are going, Whoa. I was like, wow, <laughs> look at this, this is amazing. Give, give me the ball. Let me show you, let me show you what I can do. I, 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 no, I've never been scared of anywhere. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, who would you say is the most famous person you've got in your phone book? <sighs> My wife. Your, yeah, of course. Yeah. My wife. Do you not uh, fancy coming up for a wee job in like River City or something up here in <laughs> <when> so? <laughs> um, oh look, my 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 phones. Look, I have, I have one or two, but yeah. I recently I have to say, probably Sonny Federa. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I've just recently met him, which is absolutely a top bloke. So, yeah. No, um, I've written the story before us as well. Nicky Byrne, did you share from Wesley? Did you share a flat with him? Or, or I well, we I shared not a uh, shared a house. A house, okay. Uh, we were we were um, young YTSs. Uh, he was in another room and I was in another room, and obviously we were very much together because a lot of people went home on the weekends, but me and him didn't. So we were like best friends, but like we were like brothers. Like we'd be best friends, and all of a sudden we'd be fighting. The next minute we'd be best friends again, and then we'd be fighting. <laughs> Um, but yes, I, uh, so this was at Leeds. Yeah, this was at Leeds. Um, was he just another room practicing his guitar? And no, he was never practicing. He was always singing though. Was he? He was always singing. He was always, singing. always singing and dancing. And we always used to say to him, you know, why don't you, why don't you just go and like sing in a band? Like you should actually go sing in a band and like, Lo and behold, he left and went and sang in one of the greatest bands ever. So if Wesley were ever coming and I'm needing tickets, then I know I'm coming too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, final question, um, how many beers did you have after the Champions League final in 2005? <laughs> so I had actually none. Really? I snapped my groin, don't forget. Of course, you were finished. Yeah, so staff, I wasn't in the, in the party mood. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. To, and, and, and again, people always go, oh my God, it's amazing. And, and like I said, it's... I always have two sides of this and I, 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 talk, I tell my individual side and then I tell about what it is to play in a team. Yeah. And unfortunately, it's not about yourself, it's about your team. And, you know, I, I did what I can to celebrate with them, but like, as a, on, a, on a personal note, it was one of the hardest nights because it's probably one of the biggest games an Australian can ever play in. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, hopefully we could get to a World Cup final, but other than that, it's a, it's a European Cup final. And, you know, for my, my groin to snap, in that game it was it was painful and you know knowing I was going in for surgery the next day you know it was tough it was a tough one to take yeah. um, but like I said it's not about me you know it's 
this is why you're playing a team sport because your teammates get you through it. Yeah. Well, flip that actually then. How many beers did you have after the Scottish Cup final? I forgot to travel. <laughs> Uh, 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 none because you can't have any while you, you're driving up you're, here you're so I coach. have to you can wait. have it now you're fine <laughs> <laughs> well Harry hopefully more celebrations this season thank you so much for your time I really appreciate it thank you thank you